far Don't stop now Reaching for a distant star Don't stop now Isn't it strange that how we're safe from home? Turn it back out and dance until the second go If you're gonna break our shades, you have to let me know Turn this shit around, just out of top of notes Is all you need to do
searching for a distant star Don't stop now Isn't it strange that how we're safe and home? To the dark out and days until the second come If you're gonna break those shades, you have to let me know Turn the shit around to start a top the notes Cause all you need to do What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV back here for another morning stream or afternoon stream, or whatever you, where, wherever you are in the world. But uh, we got transfers to talk about now, seeing as we are in the winter break. Six, do we? <laughs> well, yeah, we do actually. Six or seven days uh, to go um, of the transfer window, and the news is just getting worse and worse by the day. To be honest, it's just getting worse and worse, and I'm getting so stressed. Uh, right now, I'm getting so stressed. Seven days into the window, I call for patience. Seven days left of the window, I'm calling for panic. Six days left. Six days left, I'm calling for panic. It's it's a sad state of affairs right now, isn't it? Well, the way it's going, it's not going in a good direction, is it? You know, we're hearing, we'll get into all the stories uh, soon, but um, it looks like we're in the midst of yet another Daniel Levy special January trance window. Daniel Levy masterclass is coming um we've got three headlines to talk to you about and then we're going to get you guys on to have your say um the link is in the community section right now uh, for members if you want to come on and have your say uh but let's start off with sofian amrabat if that's how you pronounce his name um all the reliable sources coming out and talking about this one this morning demasio saying uh, the discussions have only just started, but Tottenham is now an option for Sofian Amrabat. Fabrizio Romano saying Amrabat is on the Tottenham list. First contacts took place on Sunday. Talks ongoing. Deal also depends on Undombele loan to PSG. All parties involved are in talks. And Dan Kilpatrick says Spurs are in talks with Fiorentina over a low move for Sofian Amrabat as Conte looks to boost his midfield options. So first of all, who is this Sofian Amrabat? He's a midfielder that plays for Fiorentina, or he's a midfielder that doesn't play for Fiorentina too much, <laughs> let's be honest. I mean, he's had one start this season, 10 sub-appearances. He's a defensive midfielder, a, a midfielder that um, in every season under Fiorentina has committed more fouls than tackles. Um, he's a player that, when you're looking at the current squad, when you're looking at Hoybier, Winks, uh, Skip... I mean, I have never seen this guy play, but if he can't get into the Fiorentina side, how the hell is he going to get into the Spurs side? Unless we're saying that our centre-mid options are worse than Fiorentina. Is how that what we're saying? Like, our defensive mid. 
He's a defensive mid. We've already got Skip, Hoybier, and potentially even Winks to fill that role. So why? I don't understand this at all. At all. Um, it's very, very peculiar why we're look looks like we're looking for a loan deal for for, uh, for this guy. Obviously, I haven't seen too much of him. Um, but the f very fact he can't get into Fiorentina's side, not only that, but the very fact the profile of, of, of the player that he is, to me, doesn't seem like the kind of player that we need. Um, by all accounts, from, from what we've read, it seems like Conte is a fan of him. So maybe Conte is the one pushing this deal. And if that's, tr that's the truth, who are we to say that this isn't the guy for Tottenham? But for me, from what I thought the profile of player we needed... Um, from this window we didn't need another defensive midfielder we didn't need a player who's much more um, um more about uh, the defensive side of this game we needed someone who's very good on the ball passing wise ability wise someone who's able uh to get the passing move going he's able to pick out passes from deep or even in the final third so um i don't know i don't know about this deal i i, I put, out, put out a tweet asking um if there are any fiorentina fans who are able to um, tell us a bit more about him. And uh, I'll give you some of the responses. First of all, from Danny Kiriaku, the bun, see big up the bun. See if you're a Tina fan. He's not, but he, but he claims, uh, from what I've seen, this guy is like Stan Bouli. He's effing awful. We are done. And Conte walked to this guy. If we bring in this guy, you wait and see. Um, Na uh, Namdala. Um, says um, he was excellent at Verona, average first season at Fiorentina, very poor when he has played this season. The Verona version is a very good player. The final and Fiorentina version is certainly not as good as what we currently have. Um, the Wellman Sam says, depends on what you expect. He's really a CDM, very strong on the ball, not and not bad defensively, although a bit aggressive. He gets booked a lot has no creativity. At best, he might be a better CDM than we have, which may free up Winks to express himself. But that is being optimistic. Ollie Spencer says, I tried to watch most Fiorentina games, and I remember a few years ago, Amrabat being a very exciting, quite unique talent, but he never really kicked on and has stagnated and isn't a regular fixture under the Italiano. In a similar mould to Moussa Dembele, but nowhere near as good, quite average. Um, so no one has really uh, given me any sort of uh, positivity. Um, although uh, uh, Bardi from um, the Fighting Cock, or the yeah, he um, sorry the yeah the yeah he met, he sent us a, a link showing that um, showing Amrabat uh, uh, his performance against Gabon in the Afcon apparently was very good, and he says. This is why Morocco, he is Morocco's most trusted midfielder, playing with two wide number eights in the 4-1-2-1-2. He's covering for three Gabon players when the team is dispossessed, invaluable presence in midfield. Yeah. So I've had enough of hearing like these guys are, are their country's most trusted players. When we signed Vlad Ciriches, I heard that he was Romania's most trusted defender. So <laughs> uh, I'm not going to read too much into that one, you know what I mean? Mm. I guess so. That's all. That's that's kind of what we were. That's the inkling we're getting at the moment um, about this this signing. It doesn't excite me. It doesn't seem like the player I want really at Tottenham. Um, it doesn't just doesn't seem... make sense. It doesn't make sense why we're going for for this position. I mean, fine, central midfielder with a bit of creativity, but why a CDM? When yeah, when the, when the squad is packed of them. And we're getting rid of Ndombele Lisolso and Delhi and Delhi, and we're bringing in Amrabat. And so the, the update that we brought you yesterday from Ali Gold saying, uh, you know, selling these three players, um, it remains to be seen if we are going to bring in a creative midfielder. No, we're bringing another central defensive midfielder. That's what we're so doing. If, if, if that happens, if all this happens, by the way, Fabrizio Romano said it's dependent on Ndombele leaving. So we're literally replacing our record signing with um, a Fiorentina bench warmer. Yeah. Um, that's if things go well. <laughs> um, that, I Like... Where is the quality coming from in midfield? Like at Inter Milan, he had the likes of Barella, you know? He had the likes of um, Ericsson there. He had, he had, he had proper he had Brozovic. He had proper quality there. We have Hoybier, Winks, Skip. They're, they're good players, but they don't have that kind of ability on the ball that, we, that we're, we're missing. And I thought that's what we we're going to be bringing in. But unfortunately, we're going for... He's, he, he seems like another... Very similar mould to what we already have in terms of profile of player. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I'm talking about, and let's just hope 
let's just hope this is a smoke screen or something. And let's hope this isn't actually going to get over the line because I really don't see the point of this. I just don't see the point of it whatsoever. But let's be honest, if Conte wants him, then Conte wants him. I mean, who are we to, to say that um, he won't be a good player for, for the manager? But I just can't see this one working at all. And it stinks to me of Jetson Fernandez last uh, last January or two Januarys ago, whenever it was, just a panic buy, just a complete. Seems panic like Benjamin Stambouli. Yeah, you know all these players that come in that you know they're not going to work. Stambouli, Jetson Fernandez, these central midfielders that just don't do anything for us. And I just feel like this is just going to be another one of them. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about. And. Um, I guess it's only a loan deal. That's what's being mooted at the moment. So if it, it really doesn't work out, we can ship him out in uh, in the summer. Don't need to sign him. But uh, why? You know, f- I just feel like you know what it stinks of. We're, exactly, which we we stinks of. We're day twenty five and got no one. That's what it stinks of, basically. It stinks of. Uh, yeah, it's day twenty five for twenty days. We've been. Um, We've been doing absolutely nothing, haggling over two, three million with uh, with Wolves for Adama Traore. Still haven't put in the bid, which we we'll actually will get into in more detail in a minute. Still haven't put in the bid for Adama Traore. Now scrambling around for everything else that we need. S- six days, six, seven days to go, however long it is. And um, and you're still talking about the same players that you were talking about at the beginning of the window, of getting out Undombele, uh, Deli Ali, all these players, um, and, and no movement whatsoever. The There's fact, been no movement. The fact of the matter is, right, this guy, how, you, how many games he started for Fiorentina? One game One. this season, right? And made 10 sub appearances. Do you really think if we were, we really wanted this guy, say this guy was on our list from the beginning, right? Well, this is a guy we were wanted from the beginning of the window. We couldn't have got this done early. Stinks, you know what it stinks of as well? Nuno. The Nuno deal, the way they had that all planned out, you know what I mean? It's just like panic, 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 panic. But like the, this guy's been available the whole window as well. There's no, there's the only reason we're going for him now is because we're panicking, yeah. and we haven't because we, we've we've got nothing. Yeah. We, we 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 don't know what we're doing, and and I, it's so frustrating. Again, I really thought Conte's here, Paratigi's here. We can get some good movement, and I know January is more difficult than other windows, but there is quality to be had there. In, um, and I'm sorry, we don't have to resort to uh, panicking and getting a, a, a player who can't get a game for Fiorentina into our team. Yeah, there were the rumours over the last couple of days um, about two specific players who I would love both of them at the club in Frank Kessie. Uh, the rumours were that we've agreed a deal with AC Milan, but he and his agents don't want to move until the end of the window, which is completely fair enough when you're looking at it from uh, Frank Kessie's uh, lenses. And um, Gigi Wijnaldum as well. Uh, the rumours yesterday about Gigi Wijnaldum is that there's been no talks about him coming to Spurs. And even so, he wants to stay at PSG for the for the rest of the season anyway. Yeah, I would rather, or I guess Paredes apparently rejected us, but I'd definitely rather Paredes than him, than Amrabat. But I'm sure across Europe, there must be better, better options than him. You would think so, wouldn't you? That we can get in this window. You would think so. And the, but I guess if this is the profile of player he wants, then what can we what can we say? But I just but why is this the profile of player he wants? It just doesn't make sense to me. Don't know. Does it make sense to you? Like no. when we've got Hoybier, Skip, and Winks. Yeah, you would think they that they cover kind of the more defensive options, and we can get a more talented, a more um, a more player with more ability on the ball. Someone like a Ruben Neves or something like that. Obviously, I'm not saying we shine him now, but I mean, I would. I mean, I would. I would love Ruben Neves now. I'm not saying I don't think that's possible now, but something or someone of that kind of a bit that kind of mould. And it seems like when that's not what we're interested in. I don't know. It's very confusing. And this is what I've been saying. As much as Indombele, Lo Celso, and Delhi haven't worked out, and fair enough. I don't mind us moving him on, but. We have to get some sort of quality in this squad, otherwise we're it's gonna we're gonna be way too easy to play against. Yeah, hundred um, percent. So that is the story on Sophia and Amrabat. Uh, like I said, discussions are apparently uh, taking place between Spurs and Fiorentina and all parties involved, and it does hinge on uh, Tangi Undombele leaving apparently, which we'll get into <laughs> in a few minutes. Uh, just before we get onto the next headline, I want to get for a few scoop super chats. Skinny Fat Huey saying it feels like a stopgap until Kessie comes in in the summer. I mean, yeah, if we can a, get Kessie. That's a risk, isn't it? That's a massive risk. I mean, obviously, it's not a risk bringing the stopgap, but it's a risk relying on Kessie because Kessie's going to have a whole host of options in the summer, isn't he? That's Free why he's transfer. waiting. Exactly. Apparently, we've agreed. Apparently, 
a few sources now saying we did agree a deal with AC Milan for Kessie, but he doesn't want to come now, and it's completely understandable. Why would he? There's yeah. no. This is what I was saying. There's no reason for him to come now. Literally none. Neville uh, Murugan says, hey guys, how do I become a member of this channel? Uh, if you go to the membership tabs, you can uh, sift through the membership options. There are two there. Um, and then you can come on and have your say link. Will you be click join, you section. scroll down and click join. Or you can do that, scroll down and click join as well. Uh, those are the two options for you. Uh, what else have we got here? We've got here one from Jack Yu saying, 25 days and no ins or out simply isn't good enough anymore. 20 years of mediocrity on and off the pitch. If Conte walks, there is no coming back for Enoch. And that is absolutely yeah. spot on. If Conte walks, because of what the Same hierarchy game. have done, that's it. They're done. They're done, in done my for. opinion. They really are. I mean, I mean, to be honest, how they can go another trans window tr doing the same shit again. Yeah. I really thought they'd get their act together this window and just like, at least early in the window, like try and be proactive again. They're doing the same shit every time. Yeah. It's enough, honestly. I've had enough of this enough bloody, um, enough. enough of these negotiation tactics. Yeah, Honestly, wait till the last second. Try and get every little penny off you can. And then, then um, if you miss out on a target, then that's it. You just, we have to deal with mediocrity. That's just how we do things. Oh. I got another one for you guys. I got another one for you guys to make you even more um, happy with the board. Um, and as you know, Adama Traore has been imminent since the first day of the window. Literally imminent. Um, they've been haggling over a few million here, a few million there. We've had some updates on Adama Traore this morning. The first one from hmm. Alistair Gold. And he says Tottenham are yet to make their move on Wolves winger Adama Traore as talks continue into the final six days of the January transfer window. Jonathan Veal says Spur Tottenham are still in talks with Wolves over Adama Traore. No deal has yet been struck, but hopes that that will change before the end of the window. I mean, what are they playing at? What are they playing at? This guy joke. has been willing to come since the first day of the window. We've been wanting him since last last um, last window in the summer. Wolves are willing to let him go. They've named their price. We've made a bid that is actually close to that price, but not close enough. Get the bloody deal done. I don't understand what's wrong with this club. Charlie Eccleshev says um, Wolves are holding out for 20.9 million. So give him the money. Like what are we had over? Apparently we had a 15 million bid rejected. So what are we haggling over here? Like, seriously, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, and I just want to read the full update from Ali because I think it's interesting. He says, while there is confidence that a move will happen before the deadline, there have been different noises coming out from all three parties involved about the stage of the deal. The word from Wolves is that Tottenham had a 15 million bid rejected for Traore, and then there is an expectation that an agreement would be found. The North London club, Tottenham's, however, believe uh, are, are believed to be surprised at a suggestion that they've made a bid, uh, failed bid, and claim to have yet to make a bid, that have, and that has taken place. And then other reports have claimed that Spurs are preparing a 20 million pound bid for, um, for Traore, but Wolves are holding out for 30 million, but it's believed that 20 million would be enough to seal the deal. And the source is close to the Traore camp, are saying they believe an agreement is very, very close. So I don't, so it's very peculiar what is going on, but I don't understand how we're day 25 of this window and what's going on? Why why is this not signed still been delivered? The price at the beginning of the window, everyone was reporting is 20 million. The price now, everyone's still reporting it is 20 million. 20.9. <laughs> so what is, what is, nothing's changed. I don't understand, nothing, what could you possibly be haggling over a few million here or there? Get the deal over the line. But it's all classic Daniel Levy. He has to win every negotiation. He has to get the best does deal. Not, does he not realise getting the players in that, that we want? That's the win in the negotiation. Not haggling over a million here and a million there. Getting the players that Conte wants. That is the winning the negotiation. But every penny counts That is him. winning the negotiation. I'm sick and tired of this haggling of one million, two million, missing out players because of it. Leaving ourselves short because of it. You know, failing on our targets because of this idiot that can't get deals over the line. Drives me insane. It really does. This We could have had him for January. We could have used him in January. We, we needed had him, him. for all three of the Chelsea games. We could have had him for any half of the games that we had in January. You know what I mean? It's just we're haggling over a few million, few million there. You're going to lose out on that few million uh, when we don't get in the Champions but League this season I, 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 because I, I, of it. But I don't understand. Tottenham is saying they haven't made a bid. Like, Why? 
Why have you not made a bid? If at least, at least if you've made a 15 million pound bid, I can whatever and it's rejected. I can kind of understand. Okay, you thought you could kind of undercut them. Maybe they could, they would accept the lower bid. But tell them like, no, no, we haven't made a bid. It's like, well, why then? Why? What are you waiting for? What? 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 What is the hold up? Are you going to literally wait till the last minute for every single deal? Paul O'Keefe, uh, who obviously gets some information, he was talking about the deal. He said. Um, it's up to, he said, it's up to Spurs. It said, uh, as I said all along, power is in their hands to just go and press go. Them, pre them briefing the media that there's been no bid. It's probably because they're waiting on outgoings and beginning to cover bases with narratives. It's down to Tottenham. But we were told that this Adama deal has no relation to any outgoings. It's the further deals on from that that have relation to outgoings. That's what we've been told. Mm-hmm. I mean, this, the whole thing is ridiculous. And, and, and when the power is in Spurs' court, that's the problem here because yeah. we need the power to be in the other, on the, on Literally, the other side. Literally, we, we need, need to rush this deal along because they will take their sweet-ass time to get as much money off as possible. And that's how Levy likes to do things. And that's so frustrating. Look, at the end of the day, this can go to the deadline because we don't have any games left until next month anyway. So it doesn't really matter. The only thing that matters is our... Uh, uh, our stress levels, which he's putting yeah, us but, under, but it kind of but does. It kind of does matter because we've got so much business to do. It's not just a Dharma that we got a haggle in from now until the end of the window. We got all these players to get out. We got all these players to get in, mm -hmm. um, and and at the end of the day, if we're just haggling over a Dharma, that's the only thing that's going to get done. And what I don't understand is if the price at, at the first of January was twenty million, the price now is twenty million, and it's taken this long to negotiate a deal. Right, when we're probably going to end up paying 20 million. Yeah. Then how long is it going to take to negotiate all these other, all these other deals? Yeah, exactly. That exactly. Has so, I mean, how can you take 25 days to negotiate from 20 million to 20 million? I don't understand. <laughs> it's, uh, it does this my club, head man. in. This club. Just get it over the line, get him through, and then move on. We don't need to be wasting time, any more time on this deal. Unless, unless we're just giving up on getting anyone else in because there are six days left. If you think that, play, that clubs, it's going to be easy to get players this late in the window, good quality players who clubs rely on, that's probably why we're going for people like Amrabat because he's someone who Fiorentina are probably going to allow, allowing to let go with six days left. Who else is going to let go of a good player with six days left? No one. This is, this is why we're in the situation we're in because of this bloody incompetence and the the reactive nature of this board yeah well that's absolutely spot on so that's the situation with the dharma triori apparently a bid hasn't even gone in yet um we'll have to see how it plays out obviously we'll bring you news as and when anything uh, does break uh, so that's a dharma triori a uh, couple more super chats that have come in uh, from F Reader saying, even if Conte eventually leaves, Enoch and Levy will not care unless people start cancelling season tickets, etc. There will be no change. What would you say to that? That's what it seems. I mean, I, th I, re I really thought they were going to be a bit more proactive in this window, but they just, they they really being they're being even less proactive than before. Do you think there is a danger of Conte walking in the next week? I don't think he's going to walk, even if we sign no one. I, I really don't believe he's going to walk at the end of the, uh, uh, this season. But I think he, at the end of the season, he might well do. It depends. If he really believes that if, if we don't sign anyone and he really believes like he's not even going to get anywhere near top four without any signings, then he might well, to save his reputation, walk. But I believe that um, he thinks there might be an outside chance of top four even without any signings. So I don't think he will walk. But at the end of the season... I think there's a good chance he would. Mm. I think there's a good like like I think would the similar thing happened with Chelsea. There's a lot of talk with him with him walking mid season. Um he stayed the course, he finished the season, won the FA Cup and then he walked. So I think I think that's probably a similar situation here. Yeah, I can see that. Danny Kiriaku, uh, member for 12 months. Du, du, du. Big up, Danny. Danny Kiriaku. And he says, from Austria with love, lads. Levy out. Conte will walk and will be Man United manager by the summer. Levy is a C dot, dot, dot. And will never change. Levy out. Um, yeah, to be honest, 
I can see that happening. Him walking at the end of the season, going straight into the doors of uh, Old Trafford. Yeah, and that would be a massive kick in the nuts if he does if that, that. That will make the fans rile up even more uh, mm-hmm. than just Conte leaving. If Conte leaves and goes to Man United, bloody hell, this guy was going to have blood on his hands. He really will. I mean, how how would we be able to stomach that? Never mind, let that happen. No, I don't even want to entertain that. It's such a viable option, though, isn't it? Like, if he leaves well, the they could, season. They could, have, they could have got Conte before, though, couldn't they? So, I don't know. When? When Oli was under all that pressure. Yeah, but, you know, they never sacked him in the end. And, no, they didn't. Um, you know, they still had a manager at that time, didn't they? And... I don't know. I don't know. I think it's if he walks at the end of the season, I, 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 I wouldn't put it past him uh, going to Old Trafford. I really wouldn't. Hmm. And it would be a good move for him, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be a very good move for him. And uh, for United. Yeah, exactly. Let's uh, move on. I think that's Man United's ticket back to the big time. I really do. Uh, but let's move on and let's talk about Tangi and Dombele now. Um, get French football now. Quite a reliable source have been talking. And they say Tangi and Dombele has agreed a move to PSG a deal on loan with an option to buy with PSG covering all the wages. It's agreed in principle between the clubs, but Daniel Levy has not given final sign-off. Still trying to fight for something permanent. Just again, like delaying things even more. I understand a permanent deal is obviously better if we can get that done. Um, but if they're not, if there's no signal they're looking for a permanent deal obviously no one else is going to do it permanently apart from PSG so if PSG aren't going to go for it permanently then a loan deal with all the wages covered is pretty is a good deal mm. so why wouldn't you go for that like I don't understand what the hold up is um, another deal which again is preventing if, if we're waiting on outgoings and Levy's preventing the outgoings then it all goes back to them again you know what I mean? I understand the narrative like, oh, we need to sell players and if no one wants them, what are we supposed to do? But PSG want them on loan. They're prepared to cover all the wages and we're saying no. So, what, so we're holding up even that. Everything's being held up. And it's day again, day 25. We need, the time is not on our side in, in, in any way, stretched, uh, shape or form. Like I think these, these, these days of getting mega deadline day deals well, like we used to like Robinho and Berbatov and all these things they don't happen as much anymore it's harder to get those crazy deadlines because clubs are smarter now they don't want to lose um, big players on, on, on a whim like they, like they did back in the past so I think Levy is just outdated man he's got a He's got to buck up his ideas in, in his negotiations. It's ridiculous. How, like, if Ndombele is prepared to go on loan for six months with, uh, with his wages covered for PSG, get him out, you get a player, get him, sign, a, sign a player to replace him, and then you move on. Whatever happened to Levy taking a step back? Whatever happened to that? Yeah. I, yeah, what's, what's going on with that? I read yesterday from the Daily Mail, it says... Um, Levy is notorious. We, everyone says uh, Levy is notorious for um, for being tight with his checkbook, and um, it says uh, it said that um, what did it say? It said uh, even now um, that no transfer gets signed off unless Levy is one hundred percent convinced. What, what, what was Paratici brought in for then? What, why are we convincing Levy? What does he know about football? He doesn't know anything about football. He knows about business. Shit, it's the same shit. Levy. The whole point of being Paratici is he's supposed to be in control. In squad, not in the squad. Who goes? Who stays? I mean, it's ridiculous. What How? should be happening is Paratici goes to him and says, we're convinced by this player. And Levy's like, okay, let's sign him. It's not like Paratici's like trying to convince Levy of the player. Levy, uh, uh, Paratici is the one who should have the final say on who, um, on which players we're signing. Not let's Levy. Be let's be honest, though. Did you ever, did you ever believe that that was ever going to be the case? Did you ever believe Levy was ever going to take a complete step back? Because I didn't. I was hoping. Yeah, you. Everyone's got a hope, but do we actually believe that actually that was actually going to be the case? It was never going to be the case. He's he's too much of a power hungry, mad. You know what I mean? He just wants his hands in every pie. He wants to micromanage everyone. He wants to manage everyone. He wants to have the final say on everything, even things that he doesn't even know about. 
the playing staff in the football team. He has no clue what, what, what this football team needs. He has no clue. Leave it over to the people that know, Paratici and Conte. Leave it to them. How long ago was that trip to Barbados, wherever they went? That the that first trip? week of the window, wasn't it? I thought they had made all their decisions after that. Yeah. They, had a great, they had a great meeting with Conte. Oh, really positive meeting. They, made, they decided, oh, Levy decided with Joe Lewis he was going to get a striker, a centre mid and, and a right back or something. Or well, what's going on? It's day 25 and we're, not, we're no nearer. We haven't even made a bid for Traore, which we know the price. It's actually kind of right, regressed from what we were at that stage. Uh, uh, Traore has been imminent that, this whole time. It's imminent. And we're, we're just screwing around. And we're delaying this Ndombele bid. Delaying everything until the last day of the window, leaving us too late to do any sort of good business. Um, my, my opinion, from now until the end of the window, we'll probably get Undombele out. We'll probably get Adama in, and, and that's probably about it. Maybe we get Amrabat on loan. I wouldn't great, be surprised. Great stuff. Look, they, look uh, Fiorentina clearly don't want him, so we'll probably get him in. <laughs> I can't believe we're going for a midfielder that Fiorentina don't care about. Mm -hmm. That Fiorentina don't care about. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. So it's very, very frustrating for Tottenham fans at the moment, and it's... Oh, I'm getting frustrated day by day at the moment. Day by day, it's, it's getting all the more frustrating. And, and as well, like, I get it, Undombele, we need to get him out. But he is our record signing and he's a very talented player. So if you're going to get him out, you need to, you need to bring someone in who's going to be able to add some quality. And I'm worried that we're just going to get Undombele out and we're going to have no quality coming in. And we're going to be sure. Yeah. Um, I'm, I've got the exact same worries. It's very, uh, very um, worrying what's going on right now. It really is. Uh, there are six or seven days left. Uh, was it six days left? Six days. There are six days left. So there is, I was going to say there is time, but there actually isn't. There just isn't time to do to do what we need to do um, with the way this board like to act. There just I, isn't time. I read yesterday, uh, I think it was, I don't know who it was who published it. It said, uh, uh, Conte wants to get rid of Delhi and Dombele, yeah. <laughs> Lo Celso, Roden and Tanganga. Yeah. Seven days left. What do you mean he wants to get rid of them? How, how much time do you think we have? Do you, th uh, do you understand how long is left of this window? Not long. So, so I don't understand why you're only doing this now. Makes no sense to me, none of this. Yeah, let's see what other players we're linked with, what other players that have had one appearance for their team this season and not even like a good team, you know what I mean? Fiorentina, where are they even in the league, Fiorentina? Eighth, ninth? Don't know. It's, it's a joke. It's an absolute joke. But um, have we got anyone uh, waiting to come on? Let's bring on some guests. Who have we got? Aravind. One second, Aravind, our headphones just too tangled. Aravind. It's How are we doing, my uh, friend? Doing, not doing well, seeing yeah. the transfer business going around. Uh, talk to me, Aravind. Have you ever heard of this Amrabat before? Not until you, uh, not until Fabrizio Romano tweeted. I went to like look at the player, but this is really, really, really horrible to see this team at the day of 25 not doing any transfers. And then you have Aston Villa getting Coutinho, Luca Dean, and they also want to get Benton Co, yeah, who is much lower than us in the le league table, and they're much, way, way more ambitious than this idiot who doesn't know anything about football, who doesn't know what the fans want. And he gives the stupid statements in Prime Video saying that I get really frustrate, frustrated if my team is not where it is in the end of the transfer window. Surely you should be frustrated right now of what you're doing, right? What are you doing? So this guy is such a liar. He gives such lie promises to everyone. And that's the one thing which I hate the most. When you have a a person who is lying, why would anyone want to come and be in this club? Either Paratici, either Conte, either Skane, either Son or Loris. This guy is such a prick and a big liar. I haven't seen in anyone 
in this football world who gives false promises in the start of the uh, 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 when the league started that we're going to play our attacking football gets Nuno and now he goes to Bahamas and says we get three players we'll have 100 million of war chest we'll give you all the players and now it's day 25 and we don't even have one single player on board and we are not even close to get any players so why why what is his ambition what, what does he really want from this club i have no idea if you're not don't want to do anything related to football then don't don't be the chairman get out from here i i do i it's it's really pissing off of for fans to we want to go in a direction but you never give the key to go in the direction and you have such a great manager what else do you want you have a manager who knows what you want from the team and the everyone everyone over here if conte leaves kane is leaving i am pretty sure son will also hand in a transfer request because where is this for where is the club going no one wants to come to this club because daniel levy do a stupid negotiations because he doesn't know abc of football let me ask you this, Aravind. Um, obviously, we've just been talking about Amrabat. He's a defensive midfielder uh, from Fiorentina who can't get into their team. He's had one start this season. Um, but why why, why are we looking for a defensive midfielder when we've got Hoybier, Skip, and even Winks? I, I, I don't know. For some reason, like, I'm not sure, but these signings look more inclined more into Paratici's signings over Conte signing. Is Conte given any control towards the uh, footballing directions in the club of what needs to be signed? Because it really doubts me because I'm pretty sure, I'm 100% sure that Antonio Conte won't be going for a defensive midfielder when he has all the options because he's been crying out for Weston McKinney, he's been crying out for some other positions who we really need to do, Cassie and all that stuff. So, where are... I, 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 I really don't understand, like, what what is the power given to each person? What is Paratici's role? What is Daniel Levy's role? What is uh, Conte's role? What are they discussing? There's no I'll planning. Tell you what, so I'll tell you what the power dynamic is, Aravind. I'll tell you what the power, power dynamic is. It's everyone can go and ask Daniel Levy, um, you know, can we have this? Can we have that? Can we have this? Can we have that? And he goes, no, 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 you'll have this. That, you know, that, then why are you getting the, my, my point is if you don't want to back the manager why are you hiring him what what is the point of getting him you could have gotten someone else if why why do you i think i think so i think so getting conte was a, a panic thing done by levy to just to direct all his flaws till december and see how it goes till december and they know that totally fucked right now of whatever decisions they have made and they know the squad is shit and they know that He's given some roles to do and now they are in d25 and they are shitting themselves to don't know what to do right now and that's the situation from each and every person because this that that is for sure by now by before the january transfer window is open i as much as they're saying that antonio conti had discussed i'm pretty sure they would have had some meetings privately before this transfer window has started for sure guarantee there's no chance any club goes without a plan uh from before january 1st there is some kind of uh, players which they might have thought from before that there, there is no chance you're going into a window without no planning and that makes no sense and if you're not giving him the players this season this transfer window what what are we building upon till the summer where that's why does why do why does conti need to stay over here you're not giving him the players and i'm pretty sure summer also we don't know i don't know what we're going to do if we're not going to go into the champions league so what what is happening over here i don't understand like wh what is really happening it's really pissing off for everyone one deal adama troy 20 million how long does it take to get it done it's why yeah why have we not made a bid for adama why do you think that is it's why today 25 we haven't even made a bid yet why are we, why are we handling over 55 million you can pay 18 million for joe rodon but you can't pay 20 million for adama troy what, what is this and we're, we're going for players, I don't know who I've named, some, stu some stupid striker who's not scored a goal for aiming for 20 minutes. So what what is this? He's not running this club properly. He doesn't even know football. This totally shows that he doesn't know football. He doesn't know what the transfers needs to be done. He doesn't know what players needs to come on. And he doesn't want to improve. All he wants is the movie theaters. And that's what the money is going. It's not going in the transfers. And I'm 110% sure this club 
has enough money to do transfers and is just liar this guy is such a big liar yeah absolutely spot on aravind absolutely spot on uh, there has been the news about Ndombele as well. Apparently, everything's been agreed, uh, but Daniel Levy is stalling um, on getting him out because he wants a permanent deal and not a loan, even though PSG have offered to pay 100% of the wages. Uh, what do you make out of that? Then get him... I, I, I don't understand. Then get him out of the door because no one is going to... let. I don't know what, what is dynamics. No one is not going to pay Ndombele for the performances being showing right now. And they want to give him some kind of... Uh, they want even PSG wants to see what he can deliver for PSG because PSG is also a big club. So if they want to take a gamble, they take him on a loan, and then if the, if he plays well, then yeah, obviously. So I, I get the I get the logic behind why PSG is doing that move. So, but first point is why do we need to get rid of players to get in players right now? We need to be proactive and we need to act like a big club. We need to go for the players. Juventus is going for Dusan Vlaovic. Fabrice Romano tweeted, they're paying 75 million and getting the deal done. Why aren't we not doing for any of our transfers? They are yeah, not, on, not only that, Aravind, but they've got uh, Alvaro Morata. They've got um, uh, Paolo Dybala. You know what I mean? They've got players in that position that's going to push them further down the pecking order. Why can't and we do in, the in, same? In, and then in Serie A, Juventus, there aren't there, there are much fans watching. I'm pretty sure even they are losing revenue and even they are losing money, but they're acting like a big club. They want to get the big players to play for the big uh, league to go back to where they are. And they are pissed because Inter Milan is winning the title back to back. And they want to come back where they are. But we aren't. And that's why we get, uh, uh, we get uh, uh, everyone uh, uh, that doesn't give a shit. That's why we don't win trophies. It's simple because we never show the ambition to sh be where we are and to get the good players. And we all we do is sit down here waiting to what to done you need uh, what, i heard para teacher was saying that we should not mess around for five six billion if we want the player mm -hmm. what's he doing i don't get it para teacher at the start of the season used to talk to the fans w what's happened right now for past three months i haven't heard anything from uh this thing there's no communication between the fans and the board what they yeah, are doing daniel levy, daniel levy probably stepped in he was like look fabio we don't do that round here we don't do that round here this is, I do I don't know is he like living in some kind of uh, 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 somewhere in some multiverse where he's thinking that oh we're winning everything doesn't doesn't he understand what the fans want and he doesn't have any ambition to win anything or what I don't get the logic bandit we have if, if these guys are going to sell that three players and not get, bring in any replacement and I'm hundred and ten percent sure Conte is working going out the next day the next day for sure and that that's the situation six days we're, come on let's be serious you know we're not gonna we're not gonna loan out Deli Ali and Dombley and uh Giovanni Lo Celso and get in uh four top players in the last six days it's impossible it's impossible if they do if they do anything like that th then it's something uh, uh, a miracle to happen it's not possible come on six days left in the window we're not even linked to any of the players. You, you, no one can tell us. Oh, without Endomle, we're getting this. We're not linked with anyone. To get replaced. Forget about getting the players. We're not even linked with anyone. It's just speculation after speculation. Oh, here and there, here and there. So what's going on in the club? What's the planning? There is no planning. There is no uh, direction, and there is no trust. You get in the manager, trust him. So, yeah. um, this pisses Absolutely. me off. It really pisses off there is Absolutely. no kind of planning which is done it's just a dilemma or a solution to say that oh Tottenham Hotspur football club is a big club but panic, we don't panic, act like panic. a big club and, I'm, and if we go on this just if it's this philosophy we are going to be a mid-table club soon if this is what yeah. this is how is going to direct the football club and 31st 31st is the way uh, we, 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 we're giving them I mean, first of all it's already a uh, time uh, a lot of time taken but 31st, if this is the situation, I am I'm sorry to say, I'm sorry to say, he needs to leave. This board needs to leave. 20 years, nothing has changed. They don't want to change. They want to be how they are. All they care is about the stadium, money, and all that stuff. There's no belief. There's no players. There's no trust. And it's all lies, lies, lies. He's going to lie again after the transfer window. He's going to lie again and again and again and again and again. Bring in some uh, slow, short-term solutions just to make the fans happy. 
but nothing is improving in this club. Nothing, nothing is improving. And it really pisses me off. Nothing. Yeah. And not in one solution, one thing, which I can't even see anything, either in terms of, okay, if you're not getting Antonio Conte, you're getting another manager, you want to build this kind of person, build this kind of a team uh, uh, for three, four years. Project. He did that coach, you know, he sacked him also because he didn't, he didn't believe him after three, four years of what he's done. And now we're bringing in Conte. You want him to build like instant success, and you're not even doing that. So, what is the plan? I don't get it. Like you, you have tried everything. If nothing works, so who's who's the blame? You need to look at yourself, Daniel Levy. Sit down and think. What the hell are you doing in your life? Aravind, we know exactly uh, who lies at the blame at this football club. We know exactly who lies at the blame. Uh, but I'm waiting for you to come to London to head up the protests, Aravind. I've, I, if, oh my goodness, if, if I had an opportunity for now, if we're going to fly, it would have been a great thing to do for sure. Oh my, I, I, I can't, I can't, I can't stress, but I think so. The fans need to, hopefully, like a lot of them turn out for the protest, please. Uh, people need to understand that what he's doing to this club is, is very atrocious. I, why, I do want a liar taking care of Tottenham Hotspur Football Club. A liar, a, a liar is going to be a liar till the end of the, uh, till his till his death, and he's going to lie again and again and again. If you keep on lying to the fans, then that's the most criminal thing. Don't lie to us. Give us anything. If you do, if you're saying we can't, you don't can't spend. Say you can't spend. Don't give false promises. If you're saying you want to play attacking football, then getting an attacking pro profile uh, manager. Don't get Antonio Conte. So don't lie to us. That's that's what pisses to me. Don't lie to the fans. The fans are the person who runs the club. The fans are the person who know what the club is. And if you're lying to the fans, then you're not good enough to be uh, the chairman of Tottenham Hotspur Football Club. That's the first thing to do. Never lie to us. That's that's that was pisses to me. All right, Aravind. Great call as always. We'll speak to you very soon. Hopefully the next time we'll speak to you, we'll have something through the door, but I'm not holding Hopefully, my breath. for sure. But we'll speak soon, mate. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. Come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Spurs. Come on, Aravind. Uh, TK with the super chat saying, boys, love your content. What do you think about Wijnaldum and Draxler coming in for Delhi and Undombele? I yes, I would happened. love, I would love these kind of things, but we ain't getting these kind of things. Yeah. Let's let's go to the uh, the protests. We got Brian Dago outside Hotspur Way, and let's see what is going on over there. Brian, so boy, how we doing? Yeah, I mean, getting quite stressed here. How you doing? Yeah, I mean, I've been, I've been listening to the whole the whole thing, Ben uh, and Sim, and obviously, <laughs> when you mentioned Adama Traore, it just reminds me of, <laughs> like we said, since the what, since the sixth of uh, January, we're having this chat, um, and here we are, here we are. Um, just a few things to address before we do anything. I mean, first of all, the people that are saying. Uh, who's coming in, who's coming in. As I said on your show when I was in the watch along, it's not my responsibility to find backers. I don't think Chelsea fans sat down. Sorry, I've just got a tractor of all things passing me. Um, so, yeah, it, it's not... Chelsea fans didn't sit down and say, oh, we're really unhappy with Ken Bates. I've heard about this real big oil tycoon, Roman Abramovich. Let's go get him. Same didn't happen with Newcastle, same didn't happen with Man City, same didn't happen with PSG. The billionaires find the clubs. It's not my responsibility. My responsibility as a fan is to be where I say I'm going to be, be a man of my word, stick to what I say, say it how it has been the entire time again, this window. Again, one second. I know we're never going to win a trophy, mate. No one's this fucking parasites here. And exactly. I mean, we've got Spurs. Yeah, but okay, so I'll go. Cheers, brother. Um, and then the, the new one that I've seen in the chats, not just in here today, but in other chats is, don't panic because the, the, the top six haven't made moves, so there's no need to panic. I'm sorry, when did the top six buying or not buying have anything to do with Tottenham Hotspur improving? When did it become... Manchester United by a player, or, or, or we bust by a player. Well, they all they all have better squads than us, don't they? So it doesn't matter. They do, they do. But we're, we're, the, the the different excuses that come out are oh, the top six have a ball, so don't worry. We're trying to get into the top six and the top four. So when they're not strengthening, strengthen when we desperately desperately need it. 
And the great thing is, people that pass here now, they're like, "Are you?" They, they say, "Are you protesting, or are you here to like get autographs?" Well, I know we're protesting because we want to leave you out of our club, and the locals here want to leave you out because of all the fucking stuff he's buying up around the local area. They can't stand him, um, and it's just getting beyond the point. A joke again now. I mean, there's only a couple of us here again today, and like I've said the whole time, the numbers are going to come. But I said I was going to be here. And what's more important to me than stupid posts on uh, on YouTube, stupid posts on Twitter, is I'm a man of my word, and I say I'm going to do something, and I do it, and I want this person out. And people, are, and the other thing people are saying is, well, what can we do? What can we do? If you can't get down here and you feel you want to do something, retweet everything, tweet, get it out there. Because this is unacceptable. I mean, to see you guys talking about Adara again, especially you, Ben, when you were going on the on the first of January. I mean, I saw your little monologue. It was lovely. Um, say, like, here we are on the 25th, and we've got three different rumours. Has he come? Is there a bid accepted? Has there been a bid? What is the bid? Sorry, there's four. It's unacceptable. It is unacceptable. It is. You're completely right. Um, and we're six days to go now, Brian. And, and so much to do. And apparently we're looking to bring in this Sofian Amrabat, or whoever his name is, and uh, yeah, a player that can't even get into the Fiorentina team. It, it sounds perfect, doesn't it? I mean, it, it, it just sounds absolutely... How to, mate, I mean, Ben, I, I, I know we had that debate and I use that debate a lot to where we are now, but it's like literally, is anyone surprised? Now that the penny has dropped, and it's like, OK, we're now in the final week, and... I did think we were going to, not me, people like yourself, Ben, when you were saying, stop panicking, don't worry, don't worry. I understand where people were, and I went very, from zero to 100. But here we are at day 25, and these names start coming out. And now 442 broke that, that little article saying rumours Conte may walk. Well, now the mirror's picking it up. Now other people are picking it up. There is no smoke without fire when it comes to this parasite. None. This this window's been like a parody of Levy, though, isn't it? It's like a parody of himself at this point. When he can't, when he negotiates a, a deal for Everybody a dumb from twenty million to twenty million on day twenty five, like, and 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 then all, all of a sudden, Sofian Amrabat comes comes his name comes out on day twenty five, and, and we're not getting, and we're nowhere near getting a striker. In. Not, not, not talking about a striker. It's like Levy. If you if you could uh, parody Levy, this is how you would parody him, and yet this is reality. <laughs> Well, Sim, Sim, do you know what? And I didn't know the full thing. And it just goes to tell you, apparently we need to get out to bring in. Mm -hmm. And I heard you saying PSG have offered to pay 100% of his wages so we can get him out. Yet still there is something. It's like, why do we... <laughs> we, 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 we made Levy's Real Madrid... Refu yeah, Levy's, Levy's refusing to give the green light until he wants a permanent deal or something, apparently. Exactly. It's like you say we've got to get out to spend... So then you can clear 30 million off the wage bill. You can clear a foreigner out of the books because we need to get our home grown quota. PSG has said, OK, we'll pay 100% of his wages. And then it's like, OK, so that's what you want. You want the wage bill covered. And that's what we heard the whole thing was to begin with. PSG have apparently agreed to it. And now there's another thing. How, how, does, it, how does this club operate? How do people stand here? And say, okay, yeah, I can understand he wants the wages. PSG give you all the demands. He's like, oh, yeah, now there's another thing. How do you, if he's doing this business now, think how he's going to do for business coming in when he starts making new demands. And you do the time for demands and trying to play ransom with people, it's over. There's six days. Yeah. Six days to get deals done. And PSG have gone, right, we'll give you everything you want. Oh, yeah, but there's something else. So how, how many more games, how many more different things are going to have to happen before we get a deal done or someone out or fans realise, wait a minute, this has happened again. We've gone through God knows how many managers, how many directors of football, how many blooming uh, players, and who's the one person that's been there the whole fucking time? There's only one common denominator, isn't there? There is. There is been, and it, do you know what? It, it's like I said, I'm not even going to start ranting, raving, shouting, and going on a day called rant now because it's just pathetic. 
It's just Jeez. pathetic. I, I mean, I, people want to take the picture. I think it's too late for that, Brian. I think you're ready. I think you're ready all the way in there. <laughs> oh, mate, no, I, 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 I meant today. I meant today. It's too early in the morning. I am freezing my fucking tits off to get this fucking parasite out. And I will stay here. We're here till 4.30 today. We're gonna, I won't be here tomorrow because I'm having my uh, booster jab. Um, Thursday I'll be here. Friday I'll be here. Saturday I'll be here. Sunday I'll be here. Monday we're going to get here at half seven in the morning so we get here before Sky and everyone. And I'm not going till 11 p.m. Show us around. I'm, what's what's going on there today? Mate, but do you know what? Do you know what is coming in a lot today? A lot of uh, so absolutely nothing is going on. There's been a few... Uh, People walking in with, uh, or driving in with the um, with the, the Spurs training gear on, but no p p players. It looks like a youth All academy. The players are on holiday, uh, I think, think now, aren't they? Yeah, apparently they're back on Friday or Saturday. Um, but they're going to have Friday or Saturday off if they've they been Chelsea. But obviously, we know what happened there. But what what has been coming on a lot is a load of delivery trucks delivering everything in for God knows what they are. But there's loads of like those fucking big. Uh, big um, lorries with the fucking massive things to uh, drop off and deliver. They're all coming in, but we got no money. Got no money, but office supplies and everything else uh, can come in. And it's just another quiet day here. But what I will say is people driving past, the cars are bibbing, everyone's shouting, leave you out. Um, there's been a few Arsenal fans, as you expect. There are there are a few pieces of filth around this area that we need to get out. But... Um, but yeah, it, it, it's again, bib, bib, bib. Um, people have been stopping. Like I said, the, Can we the see locals the sign? are coming are out now. Are you holding up a sign? Yeah, we've got, we got Graham holding up the, uh, you know, oh, my I Dave Mackay one. Uh, you are, you're there with Graham. Hi, Graham. Let's have to say hi Graham, to Graham yeah. for us. Hi. He's saying hi. He's all face masked because it's freezing. I've only taken my face mask off so I can speak to you guys. Let's go straight back on because it's bloody blitz out here. Um... Got a but super yeah, chat I, I for can't. you, Brian. I uh, got a super chat for Tom. you. It says, big up Ben and Sim, big up Daigle. Are you protesting outside Hotspur Way tomorrow? This is from Amzo. Amzo, yes, we are. We're, I, I won't be here because, um, like I said, I have my booster shot. But there will be people. I'm going to find out the time. And on Twitter every night, I'm going to uh, put the time. Um, we're here Thursday. I'm going to be here in the afternoon. Ryan will be here in the morning. Friday night till 6. Saturday night till 6. Sunday night till 6. And then Monday, 7.30 to 11 p.m. But knowing Daniel Levy, that shitty Fiorentina uh, player you just said, he'll put in that two-hour extension just to keep me here till 1 a.m. So I'll probably be here till 1 a.m. on uh, Tuesday morning. But Monday, now, this is the thing. Monday, again, there's meant to be huge, 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 huge numbers. Um, and I'm just hoping it happens because, like I said, people know with me or against me, I stick to what I'm going to say. I've flown over from Canada uh, last time I'm here from Canada again, but because of Bob Spur, um, and this has just so happened to coincide with it. The main reason I'm here and the one reason I wasn't here yesterday was because I was seeing the great man himself. Um, so yeah, people, are people are going to be here. How many on Monday? It, it sounded like there's going to be a hell of a lot. Uh, and obviously sky are going to be here, but we're here every day and I don't care what people say about two people, three people, 10 people, we're sticking to what we say. We are trying to do something. But a lot of people that live abroad, I can see Will in the background. I know if Will was here, he would uh, be right here with me. Um, there are loads of people around the world fan base that have wanted this person out and can't get here, but are lending their support by tweeting stuff, going on social media, backing us. Um, so anyone that can't get here and you want to leave me out, just retweet everything everything we're doing because we need to get this parasite out because I'm not going for another 25 day January transfer window with absolutely fuck all. Another super chat for you from Matt B saying, Brian, never change mate, the voice of the Spurs fans. And that's from Matt B. Thank you very much indeed, Matt B. And one thing I will say about my channel is we are, we are 10 away from 3000. 10. 10. 10 on, away. I, I don't know if we've gone up since last time I checked, and I can't check whilst obviously I'm on the, with you, but we were 10 I'll away. Check for um, you, Brian. I'll check for you. You want me to check for you? Thank you. There Once. we go. Some more. Leave it out there. What are we on? Have we done it? You are on 2,999, I think. 
Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> well, one away. I think so. It doesn't show this actual number. It just says 2.99. Oh, no, it's 2,990 or something. But someone just said something, and now they're turning back. Let's see if these people are leaving out. They'll just pull it up now. One sec. Show us the action, Brian. Show us the action. Oh, they're going to say, take your photo, social media. Leave me out. There you go. Yep, they're taking photos, social media. It's, it's happening more and more. There's more people that have been coming down. Just, I think Graham and Ryan would say yesterday, people came down just because they knew we were here, had their pictures. Uh, where were they from, Graham? People were down, oh, not just down here for this, but people down from Portsmouth, not just for this, but knew we were here and took pictures and put it on their social media. So, like I said, the main thing is, is to gain awareness and get attention. And I put a tweet out about an hour ago. It's already over 100 likes and retweet, whatever. That's all, that's all we can do. 3K, That's Brian. all we can do. You've hit 3K. Woo 3K, muzzle top and Simmons off. <laughs> Thank you, boys. Thank you, everyone in the We Are You're Tom welcome. TV army. Thank you very much indeed from behalf of me, Ireland. Um, there we go. Me, 3010, we'll just said. Uh, me, uh, Brian Ireland, Adam Clark, and Ben, I loved your singing earlier. I'll do it just because he's probably watching still. Du, 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 Danny Kiriakou. Oh, it's keeping me warm. <laughs> du, 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 Danny Kiriakou. Guys, thank you very much indeed. It means the world to us. And, and yeah, like I said, if you guys can get down here, if it's for five minutes, five hours, I don't care. We're here every day. Just come and lend your support. We, uh, yeah, I'll do my best uh, to try and get down there for sure. Um, but oh, look, ben, brilliant. Brian, thanks for coming on, my friend. Uh, keep us updated if anything, if anything does happen. Um, and oh, we'll cool. speak to you very mate, soon. Like I said, you're, 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 we are Tottenham TV. We'll know before my channel knows, such is my <laughs> love for you two, and you know that. Um, but, yeah, I can't do my two-finger leave you out because I've got my gloves on and holding the phone. So I'll do it with one finger, but very forcefully. And as always, Levy fucking out. Big up, Brian. There you go. Brian Big up, Brian. Daigle. That is Brian Daigle, everyone. Uh, another super chat here from RKK saying, how will Enoch and Levy get out when Levy will price the club at over a billion and no one will want to pay the money to buy the over club? Over two billion. We are doomed. Yeah, I thought nearly it was three, like even it? three, wasn't it? Yeah, it was nearly three. Um... Yeah, I, I think it's pretty much impossible to get him out at this point. Uh, Vinicius Carrera says, thanks for representing us. The abroad fans is shocking the way Levy and the board is acting. Hashtag come on you Spurs from Brazil. And there's a bit of an update. I don't know who this guy is. Harry Shenlock. Um, where was it gone? Uh, he's claiming that Tottenham have agreed personal terms with Adama of Traore for a contract of 120 grand a week. Uh, that's what he, I don't know who this guy is. Here he is. Uh, he works for Give Me Sport. I don't know. If, I don't know if I'm going to buy that. But that's what he says. He says exclusive Spurs have an agreement in place to make Adama the fourth highest earner of the club. Wolf, Wolves wishes are clear. Fee of around twenty million with a portion as a loan fee. Right. Fourth highest earner. Yeah, I mean, how accurate is this though? Don't know. He claims to have an exclusive. A source has exclusively told Give Me Sport, this guy claims, Henry Shenlock. Oh, well, I don't know, man. I'm sick and tired of hearing all these stories. How many stories have we heard? Oh, Adama's a step away. Adama's this, Adama's that. Oh, I'm just losing faith with all these kind of reports I'm seeing online, to be honest. I think they're all a load of bollocks. But let's move and get Will Stewart on. Will, how's it going, buddy? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, Will. Yeah. Well, it's morning for me. I guess it's new afternoon for you guys. Afternoon, yeah. Afternoon for us, but, you know, feels like morning anyway, so it's all good. Yeah, look, I got... Go on, talk yeah, to well... us, Will. Talk to us. Amrabat, what, what, what is going on? So with the Amrabat thing, look, I don't I don't know much about him. I've done like a maybe a two-hour investigation in on this guy over the last, you know, 24 hours. To me, my, my theory is, is from what it looks like, and from what I've heard people say about him, he has a high work rate and he's fairly technical. He, he's not very defensive or tactical or anything like that, but he, he's very technical. So for me, if it's just a six month loan, just a stopgap to put a body, a warm body on the bench until we can sign Kessie, because he's kind of in that same vein as Kessie would be in the summertime, you know, someone is better than no one. 
especially if that no one is Tongi and Dombelli who's sitting not is on the bench or not even on um or not even on in, in the match day squad, right? So mm-hmm. um <laughs> is it somebody who I would sign or who I would want to sign? Um no. But if if the person that Conte really wants, you know, is is Kessie in that role. Um, do we want to go and sign someone else that's maybe a little bit better than Amberant, but not Kessie? No, I mean, I would, I would rather have someone who's, who's able to work hard, do what Conte asks, rather than argue with him, right, and pitch fits. Um, for six months, and then go get the player he actually wants, than buy some. You know, 20 at the end of the day, Will, player. at the end of the day, at the end of the day, this guy can't get into the Fiorentina squad. So how's he yeah. ever going to show any quality for us? Yeah, but I mean, he kind of looks he kind of looks like a hybrid between like if uh, Hoybier and Winks had a baby, right? So that makes sense. <laughs> but we've got Hoybier um, and Winks, so what do we need him for? Yeah, well, I guess you kind of have that, their, their baby, their love child uh, on the pitch <laughs> uh, at the same time as them. But um yeah, so for me, I don't get, I don't get why we need, we have, I think we have three players in that vein anyway. We have Hoiber, Wings, mm-hmm. and, and Skip. I, I think it seems weird to me why we're going in for another defensive midfielder. It's, it's, it's almost like, doesn't it seem that Tottenham has this like, this habit? Like we're either on a left winger kick or we sign like five left wingers in a window, mm-hmm. <laughs> or, or, we, or we have, or we have, like you know, now we have like four. If we, if this guy comes on loan, we'll have four defensive midfielders. Mm-hmm. Um, but no striker or no right winger really, other than Lucas Mora. Um, you know, we just go on these these trends of just signing like five people in one specific position and then not signing anyone. And and else. and will we we could be you know we're facing the possibility of getting rid of Ndombele, Le Celso, and Delhi and bringing in Amrabat to replace them. And and as much as we you know people can say what they want about Ndombele, Le Celso, and Delhi, but the, the in terms of the profile of player they are very different to what Amrabat is. And so you're replacing three potentially creative players with a more defensive or or, um, or defensive player in Amrabat. So where's the quality going to come from in midfield? Yeah, I mean, he, so like apparently his deal is passing. So he has like statistically over the last three years had like a 90% pass rate and it's forward passes. So... Maybe that's kind of what they're looking mm-hmm. for is like a deep line playmaker type of a, uh, of a guy. Um, I mean, he's not super old, but he's been out on loan uh, for different clubs. He hasn't he hasn't played uh, for Florentina or even been on Florentina's squad uh, in their squad for a while. But you know, um, like I said, if it's just a six month loan in, until we can actually get players in the summertime, like I think Kessie. Because apparently, according to the reports I'd seen yesterday, we actually had reached an agreement with AC Milan. They were willing to take it, but it's Kessie's agent who didn't want didn't want to make the move. He wanted to mm-hmm. wait and get and take and take that fifteen million himself in the summertime. But um, so I mean, if that's the player that we want, and we have like a you know gentleman's agreement or whatever. I, look, if if they were to sign like say a pre contract, so they say they they sign Kessie in the summer with this amount, da 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 da. da and then we bring this guy in for a loan for six months. Am I going to be like raging mad? No. Am I going to say like this is going to help us out now this season? No. But um, maybe, right? It's just a, an if. But like for me, I just, players that work hard for me are far better than talented, flashy players who just don't do anything. I mean, there's no, there's no value. I don't care how, I don't care how many you know, rainbow flicks and Don Belly does in training if he's not putting in any effort on the pitch on a match day, all of that's worthless, right? Like it doesn't matter what his potential is if he's not putting in any effort on the pitch. So I'd rather have somebody who actually tries to make actually make an impact at least um, with with a high work rate. Like even with Eric Lamella, even though I didn't like him, it, it wasn't I didn't like Eric, Eric Lamella because he didn't have a, a high work rate. I didn't like him because his end product was was awful. And in fact, right now. I would take Eric Lamella back in compared to <laughs> compared to what we're looking at over the past uh, you know year. But the truth is, Lamella will probably see some game time in the current state of the squad. Yeah, he, he would. probably would. Yeah, he would. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he would. And, he, and he'd at least put in a shift. He may not score any goals, but uh, he'll get a yeah. Rabona here and there. Yeah. And, and so tell me what, what, what's, right 
Exactly. And 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 Will, we're day twenty five, and there was still no bid for Adama. We're hearing we haven't put in a bid. What is going on with that deal? Yeah, look, um, this is just classic Daniel Levy, and it's the whole thing with Tongi and Dombelli too. It's like, uh, why are you why are you punching a, a gift horse in the mouth? If he wants to go to PSG and PSG are willing to pay his ridiculous, I mean, I can't believe he's on more money a week than Son is. That's ridiculous. But yeah. um, why why are you playing? You know, let him go there and then sell him off in the summertime or something like that. To somebody else at least get his wage book. You know, you're talking almost a million pounds every month and a half, right? So it's not like you got six months at least that you don't have to pay that. So that's at least, what, three, four million pounds you don't have to pay? But I mean, and then with the Terori deal, it's just Daniel Levy being Daniel Levy. And this is what's so annoying about this whole thing with him is why why are you paying Paratici in the first place? Why are you paying him? If he's supposed to be the guy who's in charge... Why are you paying him? You should be telling him this is before this transfer window even comes. You could say that the budget for this window is 60 million. That's what you got. That's all Daniel Levy should be doing. You've got 60 million. Boom. You buy who you want to buy. And then it's up to Paratici whether he buys one player or he buys five, right? That's down to him. But Daniel Levy shouldn't be getting involved with any of this, this crap. Otherwise, what, what, what are we paying Paratici for? I don't, I don't, I don't get it. The only, the only lightning. The only spotlight that I've seen or the ray of hope, and this is just wishful thinking probably on my part, but um, the fact that Juventus have gone in and put in a bid for Vlahovic and they're forking out 75 million euro means that if we actually went in with like a 20 to 25 million pound offer for McKinney, they'd probably take it right now. After that. Well, the thing is, the thing is McKinney starts for them every week. So I can't really see them letting him go for that, that little, but what, what they are going to do is they're going to try shit about uh, Alvaro Morata, someone like that. And with Conte already signed him, Paratici has already signed him at two different clubs. I mean, Conte signed him at Chelsea and Paratici signed him at Juve. I mean, <laughs> can you see us going in for Alvaro Morata from now until the end of the, se- the window? I mean, I, could, I, would, I don't know. No, that doesn't really make me happy either. I'd rather have McKinney than Morata, but... Um... And they've said that they've been willing, they've been willing to let him go, except for the fact he's been in really good form lately. And so <coughs> he's kind of been on the squad week in, week out um, since he came back from injury. But it's, I think that after forking out seventy five million euro, if we if we were to say, hey, we'll give you twenty five cash, but I know that's not a Daniel Levy thing. But if we were to say, we'll give you twenty five million million cash right here up front, I think they'd take it probably. I'm not um, so sure because that, he starts for them every week and they want to get back on top of the league. So they want to keep their best players, surely. Yeah. And they've I mean, got they've other already, players he, as well in their squad where other teams are willing to give them money. Artur from Juventus, uh, Bentacor, um as well. Um, you know, those two players have both got clubs that are willing to take them and they don't start every week for them. Yeah, I mean, that's true. And that's what makes it frustrating, right? It's like he was for sale and we drug our feet. And offered, I think it was something like what, eighteen million or something like that, and they turned like, us down. Said like every other 25. deal. Yeah, and it's like we drug our feet over what six million pounds, um, not even six million pounds, six million euro, and yeah. and now we're going to be stuck with some guy from Morocco who I didn't even know his name. Who can't even get into the Fiorentina team? Yeah. But and and and, and, hey, and welcome to Tottenham Hotspur. Is, is this just <laughs> exactly? It's just classic Daniel Levy yet again. With with six days left to the window, and we're scrambling around for players that we probably could have gotten right at the beginning of the window. So that goes to show you that we've had like the plans at the moment have been really not well thought, have they? And is this guy Amrabat right? He's been on the bench for Fiorentina all season. So if we if if he was genuinely on the list of players we wanted, we could have got him January first, no questions asked. Oh right? yeah, I mean, but are we ever though? Are we ever? <laughs> are we? Look, I, I get a bad rap for being, you know, the negative guy uh, a lot of the time. Uh, but I just, I'm just trying to be pragmatic, right? I'm trying to find, like, e- e- like even like who, who else is probably going to come on here? See, that Ambrant may be a decent, like, pool for the next six months. Probably no one. But I try to be pragmatic in my approach, meaning that I try to look at. Is there something that's beneficial? Are we moving a step up? And do I think that 
that this guy, if he works hard, which is a big if, by the way, because we don't we don't we don't know if he's going to work hard at all. But I mean, if if you have guys like Giovanni Lo Celso, who apparently is having a row with with Conte, and you got guys like Endon Belly, who obviously aren't, aren't making it into a Conte team anymore either. If you have two, these two guys who are fighting with the manager, even an average player who's willing to listen and do what the manager says is is going to be another one. Because right now, we don't have players that fit a system. We don't. We have like this hodgepodge collection of players bought from five different managers that we had over the last two years. And nobody fits. Like there's no, it's like right now we're trying to force, you know, square pegs into round holes in order just to even just have bodies on the pitch. And I mean, it's it's really, really frustrating. People say, well, you know, is Brighton better than us? Is Wolves better than us? No, like if you look at the individual name for name talent, no. But when you look at their system as a whole and the players that, the average players that they have that fit into the system of what the manager wants to do, you're going to be able to get more consistent results with average players who follow the system that the manager wants you to play than you would if you had, you know, flashy players who don't fit any, any in, in anywhere. I mean, look at the problems PSG has, right? With their squad, or even Manchester United, with their squad, should they be sitting like one point ahead of us in the table right now? No, they should be up at the top of the table of Manchester City. But it's because mm-hmm. they don't have any players that actually fit a system that the manager wants to have. They don't work as a cohesive group, just a bunch of individuals running around on the pitch. And that's what we have. But we have lower quality individuals running around <laughs> on the pitch. And... We got to get players that actually that at least fit into a mold of what Conte wants to do, right? And I don't care who they are. I don't care if their name is, you know, Huji Bobobo. Like I don't, you know, it doesn't matter bring if I've ever in. heard of him. Bring before. him in, sign him right now, five million pounds. <laughs> I'm his agent. Um, uh, uh, we'll come. In, we'll but, come in for an offer of uh, yeah. four million and then not budge. Done. Done. <laughs> Done. All right, three point five. Okay, I'm done. I'll sell them for that too. Since all I'm right, the two million, I'm the agent right, and I get, I get all of them. <laughs> no, two million will have to pass. Have to uh, pass. Well, that's Taxes what we're sticking. That's what we're sticking to. But no, I mean, I just, I just think, look, we got to do something. Uh, uh, you know, I, I don't like to be like that. I, I, I'm lying. I do. I, I told you so, kind of guy. <laughs> but like, I called, you know, I called the Emerson one. I called the Hill one. And I'm not saying that these are horrible players that will never make good. I just said that they are not ready for now. And that was why I gave this past summer window a three out of a 10 because we signed one player. Right? Yeah. Galini was a, was a maybe. Hill and Emerson is a maybe in the future. Uh, R- Romero is the only player that we signed this summer who can actually impact the first team. At least this guy is 25 years old. He looks big. He looks strong. Um, is he going to be like a, a guy that comes out and we're like, you know, singing songs uh, to him? No, right? But... If he works hard and if he follows Conte's instructions, he's going to be at least another body uh, that's going to be able to give Skip a rest or Hoy Bear a rest or Wings at least work into the rotation, come in off the bench, um, you know, play some time, play some matches, and at least maybe not make horrible mistakes. But um, I mean, that's just kind of my thing on now. But this transfer window, I don't. I'll be surprised if we even sign Torore. If you if you want me to be honest, really, do you think at this point it's it's getting getting away from us a bit? Yeah, I do. I I think it's gonna be. It's it's. It reminds me a lot about the Dybala deal, right? It was. It's happening. It's coming through. It's going to go on, and then it's. Oh, we haven't even made an offer yet, and then you know, image rights or blah blah blah. It's just. Why are we doing this? Why are we? You have a manager like Conte, who who has said at least wants him, which surprises me a little bit but if it's true that Conte wants him and he's, he's 20 it's 20 million we spent more than that on Emerson in the summer and he's not mm-hmm. even playing right like mm-hmm. we spent twice that on on, on Brian Hill and we're going to loan him out we spent two thirds of that on Jack Clark who sits in our U23 squad and doesn't do anything why not just go out and do it I don't understand why we we piddle paddle around with these players that it's not like we're talking a 60 million pound signing. Like we went out and signed him. Dumbelly drops close to 65 million euro on him. And then you just brought him right in. Like, and look how that turned out. So I don't understand why you're, you know, 20 million, he's 25, 26. You're going to at least get 75% of that in two or three years if he's junk. Right. So why not? 
Yeah. yeah, don't get it either. I think it's absolutely spawn. And it's it, it's, cla it's classic what we've been hearing again. It's like, um, even though Fabio's here, no deal gets signed off unless Levy is convinced of the signing. And it's like, why? Then why did we hire, why did we hire yeah. him? Yeah. The, the, I thought Levy was taking a step back, but still... Still, he we have to convince Levy of who we need, and as if as if Levy knows, as if Levy is um, a good fo a football mind, as if he he should be convinced of a signing. Levy has no clue what a good player is. He doesn't have a clue. That's why we got Fabio in. So it feels like it's a bit redundant at this point. Well, what are you going to do if PSG just says, "Look, uh, I'm tired of you guys yanking us around. Um, if we don't need to bring Endombele on the loan, um, screw you." Why exactly. are you even arguing about making it permanent when you could get him off the wage books, make it an 18 month loan deal or something, right? Because it's a January window or something. Do something like that and just let him take the wages. Why are you why are you forcing them to make it permanent now? Why? Mm -hmm. Why? I, I, why are you doing that? Because it's not no, like you're going to gonna get that. You're, you're not going to get that cash up front anyway. That's not how transfers work it's like amortized over the time of the contract right so mm -hmm. it's why are you even do why are you even doing this when, because what it does come out every single week are the wages so just get it off your wage bill save three four five million right then try to sell them in the summertime what is the rush on selling him because if he goes even if they don't have an obligation to buy if he goes and starts playing well in france his value goes up now when yeah. PSG comes and say they want to buy him, you may be able to even get 15 to 20 more million on it. Yeah. Why are you forcing it in now? When you could just get him out of here, get him off the wage books for six months, get, you know, focus on what we have to do in the league and stop worrying about the drama. Like, I'm serious. It's almost like Daniel Levy still thinks he's in the middle of the Amazon documentary and he's like this reality TV star. Like, I don't understand he what loves he's it. I think he loves the drama. He loves the window. Yes. He loves the negotiating. He wants to win every deal. He loves the bartering. That's what he lives for. And it's hurting us. Will, yeah, what, at, like what stage, at what stage do you think Conte considers walking if he hasn't already? Um, look, I, you know, it's, it's hard. Um, uh, I, I think he's probably, I, I think he's already kind of realized um, what's going on with that. Uh, hopefully it doesn't happen. Because look, I'm telling you right now, who else? If if Daniel Levy was actually a smart human being, he'd be like, I have just scored one of the top four managers in world of football, if not top three. And... I should be doing everything that I can to keep this guy for the next five years because the bet the more the happier he is, the better he performs, the more money I make. Right? Like this is anytime you're a you're a boss or CEO and you're going to hire people, employees do that. Right? Good, talented employees make you money. That's what they do. So unless you're going to go sit there and just you know, I mean, who's coming in after Conte leaves? Sean Dyche. I mean, like dude, <laughs> if, if if he's ever the manager of Tottenham Hotspur, like I don't, I'm, like, I'm, I'm done with this. Like I don't I don't know what. Like who comes in? Yeah. You think Pochettino's going to come back after Conte walks? I mean, if, he, if Pochettino does come back, he's a fool. He's just a yeah. plain idiot. To come 100%. Back to this club. I'm telling you right now. It's just, you know, Daniel Levy either has to go. I, I don't want Conte to leave. Like, everybody thinks Will's negative. Will wants this. Will wants people to, to not succeed. That's not true. I want this team to succeed. I don't want Conte to go. I just want things to go well. Right? So, um, and I don't know how, I don't know how this goes well if he walks. I don't. I don't think it can. No, it can't go well if, if, if he walks. If he walks, and that's it. I think that's it. I really do. It will turn so toxic around. It would be unbearable. Yeah, I'm. But to me, at least then, at least if the if a fan base, if we're united again, like we were under Pochettino, but it's just in the fact that we won't all want Levy out. At least then it's not it's not as frustrating, right? Because right now I think the frustrating part is the is the kind of the separation, the division, and the limbo, right? Where you got, you got guys like me, you know, me and Brian Daigle who are, who are you know pushing on the Levy outside, and then you have the other people who are calling us names and they're pulling from the other way. At least if we're all united again, even if it's just even if the football is horrible, even if this, the nature of the club is horrible, at least us as fans can stop arguing with each other. And get united behind a singular cause, and that's what's trying to do its best for the football club. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there could be benefits out of even 
out of even, you know, things falling apart. But I just hope it doesn't have to come to that because the easier option is just a back Conte. Like it's just so easy. It's so simple of a problem to fix. You just back the guy. Just go out and buy who he wants you to buy. You'll make that money back if he's successful. If he wins the league and he gets Champions League, you're making that back. It's like, what, 100 million pounds payout, like TV rights for Champions League, right? Mm -hmm. Even if you just get to the knockout stages. You know what I mean? So, I mean, why not? <laughs> You're at least breaking even. Well, I mean, you don't have to ask us. I mean, we need to ask the hierarchy. I mean, we have the same questions as you, but it's very, very stressful right now. Really is. Uh, but thanks for coming on today. A really good call. Thanks as for always. having me on. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you well. soon. Yep, stay strong. Leave you out. All you guys uh, have a great day. And to you, you my well. friend, and to you. Um, let's keep going. Let's go to George. How are we doing today, George? Hey, guys, not too bad. You? Yeah, getting more stressed by the minute, to be honest, uh, with all the stupid news coming out. Spurs it's in for good. Amrabat. Adama Traore, a bid hasn't gone in yet. Undombele, Levy stalling because he wants to leave, send him out on permanent instead of a loan, even though PSG have uh, said they will pay 100% of his wages. I mean, what are your thoughts regarding all of this? Um, I think I'm just going to touch on something that Will said, um, and, mm -hmm. and that was um, sort of trying to get a square peg into a round hole. Uh, yeah. I, 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 I've definitely had that feel with Conte since he's been here and he's right we've had um signings from pochettino we've had signings from um uh, Mourinho, um and however long nuno was there um yeah i'm, I'm not sure did, did, did nuno actually make any signings um i mean yeah it's... he did didn't he he made um everyone that came in in the summer was a nuno signing weren't they was there anyone significant there? Oh, the... Romero and Romero, Emerson. Gill. I wonder if that was Par um, Paratici, though. Well, we don't know, to... but Nuno yeah, was the manager. Nuno. I mean, look, I, I have my theories with Nuno. I, I think he was always going to be a stopgap. I think, mm -hmm. you know, he was he was set up to fail. Um, I think that they were talking to Conte from, from basically back in the summer. But... If we look at what's happened and, and, and just move on with that um, with that whole um, square peg into a round hole, we're in the January transfer window, and we know that it was we always knew it was going to be tough in order to get signings, and our, my expectations were really really low in who we were going to get. Um, I think if this guy is going to come in, it's obviously because we we're, we're trying to offload somebody. But like we were saying yesterday you've got to have somebody to replace them. And if you don't have anybody of quality, you're going to have to try and, and go for the next best thing. So my trying to look at things on the positive side, what I'm hoping is that what I'm hoping is that Conte said, I'm going for the, the summer transfer market. That That's where the business is going to be done. Um, and at the moment, I just need to stop gaps and I need to get some of the toxic players out. And I think it's definitely looking as though the three we're talking about, the midfielders being Ndombele, Delhi, and La Celso. I think certainly with Delhi and um, Ndombele, there's been an element of toxicity, I think, from dating back. Um, La Celso, it's, it's, it's looking as though that's begin, begun to happen with his comments after being left out on Sunday. Um, so I think it's just a case of, of getting getting rid of those guys and, and just trying to find replacements. Um, but it's not good. Um, the, the position that we're in is not great. Um, and I think the whole painful rebuild that Poch was talking about has just been escalated tenfold by the way the, the, the board has gone about trying to do this. Um, and we've got to try and keep Conte as interested as possible. And part, I mean, if hopefully he's bought into whatever the signings are going to be. He didn't look to me to be somebody who was upset with the board when he was when he had his press conference after the game on 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 Sunday. I don't, I don't get the impression that I was getting from him when he was Chelsea manager before mm -hmm. he walked. 
um, mm. his whole body language and demeanor was very different back then to, to what I'm seeing now. I mean, he's pretty much said from day one, this is a massive job. So again, trying to be positive here and, and, and trying to look at the bigger picture and looking forward on things. As I said yesterday, look, two signings, I think, is going to be the maximum. Adama is obviously going to be coming in at some point by the looks of it. Um, and he's just going to try and find something as a stopgap, I think, until the summer. Um, but George, real... it's, all, it's all well and good, you know, oh, doing all these things. So you might be right. Yeah, maybe he is thinking, OK, we need to get these toxic players out of the club and we just need some stopgaps until the summer. But we're day 25. We're day 25 in the window. What is, why are we waiting so long to get all these deals done and get moving? Why have we not even reportedly Tottenham are putting out that we haven't even put in a bid for Adama yet? What, what, why is it taking so long? Do we believe that the reports that we're hearing in, 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 in their entirety? I mean, we know the soap opera that, that Tottenham Hotspur is. I mean, you, mm -hmm. the, they, we sell papers, we sell... Um, um, you know, we, we sell things through through Twitter and, and, and everything else, or well, the whole so social media outfit. I mean, it, it you know, put, put the tweets out there, um, stir it up and, and, and use the clickbait. Um, again, looking mm -hmm. at things positively, seriously, I, I'm, mm -hmm. not, I'm not by any means saying that that's not what's happened. Mm -hmm. I've always said from day one, our board and, and, uh, are incompetent from, uh, from the football side of, of things it's it's one thing after another um you know levy we, we always say he's a good businessman i would dispute that i mean if you're a good businessman and this is the way that you're going about your business um i, I really would dispute whether you're a good businessman you've neglected the core part of your business which, which anybody would tell you um is is a disaster waiting to happen and that's been that's an open comment from the board They've said we is this, we lost is this a core part of his business though. Yeah, they said they took mind. their eye off the key priorities. Mind, or is this the key part of his business though? <sighs> Enoch, no. They're, they're, they're property merchants, and like I said, like I've said before, they've they've managed to to build a a purpose built built leisure facility in the stadium off the back of the supporters. And if that's what their goal was, yeah, they've been successful. Um, what I'm trying to say is that they could have been a lot more successful if they hadn't been so short-sighted as to invest in, in, in what was going on in the pitch. Because it, ultimately, if you want to sell that, I mean, what better way to do it than, than just have um, global views on Tottenham Hotspur instead of Chelsea, instead of Arsenal, instead of Man United, instead of Liverpool. Um, so I still think that it's very, very short-sighted. Um, and I think it's very difficult to argue otherwise. Um, but again, I'm, it's a case of trying to keep positive. And I think the thought of, of, of Conte even leaving, um, really, I'm trying not, not even to, 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 to contemplate that because I think the ramifications will be huge regarding the, the, the fan base. Um, and I think the only plus side will be the chance that we're going to end up hearing in the statement in the stadium against Levy. Um, but it's uh, it's very sad that it has to get to that. Yeah, absolutely spot on. Yeah, um, but that's yeah. reality, isn't it? When when again, you know, we I actually I generally thought oh, this Roman, window. Romano's just tweeted, Amrabat is the main target for Tottenham Hotspur's midfield. Yeah, the main target. And that's so disheartening. He's a player who can't even get a minute for uh, Fiorentina, and he's our main target. But do, do, do not stink of just panicking at, uh, you know, 25th day of the window, and it's just a panic buy. Bully, Jensen Fernandez. it stinks. Yeah, so because we could have, this is the kind of player, if we genuinely wanted him, we could have easily got him earlier in the window. There's nothing stopping us getting this kind of player early in the window because he wasn't yeah, wanted yeah. by Fiorentina. Which, the, the, the question is this, are we guaranteed... Champions League football for next season um, and I think no player is going to come to Tottenham Hotspur at the moment without the feeling that they're going to be guaranteed Champions League football next season oh, sorry no player who who is worth their soul who is what you would you know the the, the type of player who is going to um, to increase the, the 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 player profile to try and get us into into you know finals and and, and trying to win a silverware it, it, unfortunately, not being in Champions League 
um, has cost us very, very dearly. And I, I go back to what I was saying before. I mean, it's it, it's so short sighted of, of, of the board to have got us to this position um, that you've got to question their business sense. You really do have to. Um, it's it's really difficult because we're 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 trying to to be to 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 criticize or not trying to we don't have to try but <laughs> we're, we're being critical of the board um and yet really the reality is that enic are so uh entrenched in the club now and levy's an owner that i mean it's going to be it's going to be their choice as to whether they want to sell or not i i don't think we're gonna we can only try and make it as embarrassing for them as possible um but it's it's difficult looking looking at, at, at trying to see how you're going to get forward on this thing without taking a step back and and i think this transfer window has to be looked looked in that way if we're going to if we're going to try and, and move ahead um so getting this player in is definitely a step back but sometimes you just got to do that in order to try and move forward all right, George, great call as always. We'll speak to you soon. Hopefully the next time we speak to you, we'll have some more news to bring you in terms of incomings and outgoings. But very, very tough to take at the moment, the state of uh, what's going on at our club. But George, thanks for coming on and we shall speak to you soon. Coming, you Spurs. Good to see you, George. Good to see you. Uh, anyone else? All right, that is it for today. We'll be back uh, at some point today with some more content for you guys. But thank you, everyone, for joining today. Like, subscribe, and comment. And as always, come, come on, you Spurs. Spurs.